What's going on everybody? Sunny here and today we are bringing you the very first deck profile video of the channel. I did have another one of these done at first but unfortunately the upload did not go as expected so I ended up scrapping that one and uh, we have this one basically so we got something going on here so the deck revolves around this card right here. This is a Tempo Zard deck. Your main attacker here, Reshram and Charizard GX, which most people should know this card by now. With its uh, Flutter Strike 4 for 230 and it can't attack next turn, which definitely does hit a lot of good numbers for sure. But for a lot of stuff in the meta, you are going to be two-shotting a lot of stuff. It doesn't stop the fact that this can be a very, very, very fast deck indeed. Just hitting hard, applying pressure right away, so on and so forth. Uh, Double Blaze GX, you can even use this right away for just a quick 200 damage right out the gates with a Welder in conjunction with an Energy Attachment. Just a quick 200 damage, but if you do get the extra 3 energies on there, you do an extra 100 damage, and you get through any effects that are on the active Pokemon, like Decidueye for example, which is something that can easily stop this from attacking. We also have other attackers in the deck as well, like uh, Blacephalon. With its Fireball cir Circus attack, 3 Fire Energy, and discard any amount of Fire Energy from your hand, 50 damage for each Fire Energy. Which, in this deck, you can definitely acquire a lot of Fire Energy rapidly, quickly, and just knock out stuff right out the gates with this card. This card is ridiculous. And it's a single prize or two, so that makes it pretty good. And of course, we've got other cards in here like Cramorant with its Beak Catch attack that lets you search up for two cards, put them in your hand, or even Spit Shot. For a 160 damage, you discard all energy attached to this Pokemon. Do 160 to any Pokemon you want. So, in general, for this attack, we can either use it to apply pressure right away, or even to close out the game to take a cheap knockout on a Dedenne, for example. Now, also, you can tell for sure that a lot of these attacks right here, they don't exactly do the knockouts completely, which is why we have cards like Galarian. We have cards like Zigzag uh, We have Galarian Zigzagoon in the deck. With its uh, headbutt tantrum, put it on the bench, put a damage counter on a Pokemon of your choice. Which definitely helps with the math for sure. Sometimes math isn't necessarily in our favor here. That in combination with scoop up net will uh, allow you to adjust the damage as you please. And we also have other uh, draw card po card draw Pokemon, I should say. Such as Crobat V and Dedenne GX. We also have in here Victini as well. Um, just as another way to, you know, get energy on the board. And it even has a nice attack of its own. 30 times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So it can also be a fast card as well. Now, also, speaking of card draw, we also have Oracorio GX. That when a, whenever a Pokemon that we have was knocked out during my opponent's last turn, we get to draw three cards. So another way to also, you know, dig through the deck, get set up, so on and so forth. But of course, one of our main helping Pokemon here is going to be this Jirachi right here with the Stellar Wish ability. Which, let's be honest, everyone knows what Stellar Wish does by now. It's been one of the stronger cards in the format for since it's gotten printed. And of course, you know, we also have other stuff in here as well. The main draw engine here is based on a Welder. That is our main energy acceleration and card draw on the deck as well. Attached to up to two fire energy from your hand onto a Pokemon, draw three cards. It's just that simple. It's been a staple in fire decks ever since it's been printed. And that's the way it'll be until it rotates. And to also round out our supporter line, we also have two copies of Boss, and we also have a Giovanni's Exile, you know, just in case we run into ADP matchups. That's just in case. This card can probably be cut for something else. I'm I've been debating on maybe like a reset stamp or something. Which I wouldn't mind seeing reset stamp in this deck at all. You can probably cut this for sure. But it's worth a try, I'd say. And then, of course, we have four copies of Hearth over here, which is going to be the main way we search out energy in the deck, which that's the whole point. You want to search out energies. You want to get them fast. This card gets the job done for you. And we also have plenty of recursion with our fire energies with four copies of Fire Crystal. Let's say you put three fire energies from your discard pile into your hand. And then, of course, everything else is pretty simplistic at this point. Um, all the gods get you supporters back. Which, hey, you can get another welder if you want. You can get another boss if you want. You get the idea with that. And, of course, because we're running off so much firepower, no pun intended, we've got 14 copies of fire energy right here. 
just to, you know, give us the odds of having all kinds of energy in our hand, getting our attacks out fast, because that's what we want to do. We want to go fast, we want to go hard. We just want to win quickly. That's pretty much the main point. So with that, let's take this game to the ladder. Or not this game, this deck to the ladder. <laughs> we are playing a game, actually. And uh, we'll see how it does against somebody else. All right, we're in our first game right here. Flip the coin, see who goes first. We lost the coin flip, unfortunately. And they're making us go first now. That's honestly bad for us. Because with this deck, we would prefer ourselves going second. Why would we want to go second, you say? Well, second is pretty much the turn where we want to, you know, start accelerating with our welder cards, so on and so forth. We want to get that first attack off right away. But it looks like they're playing grass right off the bat. Alright. So we're just going to thin our deck out right here. Discard a fire, grab two more. Discarding a fire is not too bad. We can get those back easily with our fire crystals. And then we're just going to see what's prized right here. Looks like we do have a Reshi's Art in the prizes, unfortunately. We do have two plus Cephalon available. That's also fine. And then... Nothing else really sticks out. Looks like we have a boss prize as well, but other than that, nothing too enticing aside from, like, the uh, Reshizard, just in case. Alright. I'll attach. Uh, I don't think they're going to knock us out right away, so we'll just uh, leave the Victini in our hand. We don't want them bringing that up and uh, knocking that, and I'm knocking that out, but like, bringing it up and then it's stuck if they're trying to stall or anything like that. Okay. So we have the tag call. There's a chance that this might either be like the uh, the Rillaboom Mew 3 deck. There's always a chance of that if they get a Mew 2 and Mew out. This has been a deck that's been sort of like off and on for a bit now. But I definitely go for the Guzmahala. Now, Guzmahala, this could actually be a card that really does help them because they can easily get their hands on a what's his face energy, the uh, weakness guard energy here, which I think that's what they're going to do right here. They'll probably even bump our hearth out of the way as well. I would have to guess. But we'll see what they do. Right? Definitely see what they do. Usually, like, a deck like this would have type advantage over a deck like this. However, weakness guard energy just says no to all of that. But hold on. Looks like they got a capture energy, though. Yeah, they took a capture energy. A capture energy. I'm sorry. I can't talk properly. So I guess that they really needed to, uh get their attack going. And interesting, they play Giant Bomb in this deck. That's not a card you see very often in these kinds of decks. Not something you see too often. So that does put us in a very interesting situation. We hit it, but we're going to take a lot of damage. So that is interesting indeed. So having no noticed that, we're going to first uh, use this to thin. We'll Welder. Welder 2 on. We don't have much else here. Uh, yeah, we'll bench that just in case. I have a feeling they can come up with some kind of shenanigans, so we are going to bench the Victini here. Though, I think also... There's that party that wants to save the Double Blaze for another turn. So we will actually attach that there, and we'll just go for a simple Flare Strike. Just deal with whatever the Giant Bomb does to us, and just take three prizes right off the bat. They didn't do too much in their first turn, but then again, that doesn't really always mean anything for sure. They can definitely still have something, they're probably just not showing us. So we got the boss out of the prizes, that's good, but the other Reshi's art is still in the prizes, which, that's not good. Alright. Maybe they're still digging for a Pokemon. It's also possible. We haven't seen them got anything else yet. Let's see what they have, if anything. Nope, they've got nothing at all. Okay, so that game didn't really show too much of anything. Alright, let's see what this opponent's got in store for us. Let's see what we are to expect here. I can probably better showcase the deck better than I did that last game. Alright, cool. We won the coin flip. We would like to go second. Again, we want to play that welder right away. That is what we're aiming for. 
His hand's not the best, but I think we can still do something with this. We do have a quick ball that can get us a Crobat, a Dedenne, anything, and another one? You sit here and tell me we're gonna play nothing but grass? Did I, uh, did I miss something? I guess I missed the memo. Guessing I missed the memo. Alright. Play the hearth. Uh, yeah, we'll quick ball away the exile. And then... I think I'm... I'm compelled to go to Denny here, but it looks like the Denny is... No, oh, it's right there. It's right there. Never mind. I thought it was prized, but I was wrong. I don't think a Crobat for two to three would be that good in this situation. We are losing some stuff here, but that's fine. I'd rather dig. Try to get what we need out of this. All right. Okay, we, we did get something. We did get something. So let's... Great ball first. The Zard. Uh, bench the Zard. And we're going to go Hearth. It's kind of a tricky discard. I want to discard the energy here. I might just pitch the Victini, honestly. I might just pitch the Victini. So I do want to save the other Hearth just in case. But you know what? We actually have multiple copies of Hearth. I think we'll be fine discarding that. Let's just see how many are in the deck anyway. Okay, um, the rest are in the deck, so that's fine. That's fine. And, oh, in this is actually also interesting. We actually can have a chance to take three prizes here. We're actually going to take that opportunity right here and now. I'm just double blaze. I don't know. Keeps giving us these grass decks. We might not even have any content at all. Yeah. Not a very good game there either. I mean, we won, but I mean, for my opponent, it was just uh, the type disadvantage and other stuff in between. All right, we'll try another one. Right, it's going to be like a different type. They got a... Uh... Got a fighting deck box. I want to go second. Could be Urshifu. Could be Urshifu. Which I think we do somewhat decently against Urshifu, in my opinion. I think we do somewhat decent, I would say. They're playing the single strike one. Alright. Alright. You don't see the single strike one that often. It's still like a solid deck, though. It's still a solid deck, but not as good as the Rapid Strike. But, I mean, Single Strike can have, definitely have its moments, though. Not knocking it entirely. I might have to give it a try again before I make my full assessment on it. I haven't played it in a hot minute. Which, I mean, I, got, I do gotta respect the... Uh, the engine that it has, though. I do gotta respect the engine that Single Strike has going for it with consistent energy recursion and high-hitting damage. I do gotta respect it for that regard. Uh, Alright, we'll grab the we'll grab that with the Great Ball. And then I think uh, we'll do this. I think we'll... I think I want a Great Ball again before... Yeah, we'll Great Ball again. Try to get a Pokemon. Or a choreo, not exactly what we were looking for. Wish. Wish for a better card. <laughs> Alright. And then we'll, uh. So, not exactly a good start right here. I think here we'll just attach to the cram. 
Scoop up the Jirachi. We'll leave the Oracorio on our hand just in case if something crazy happens. Then we'll just beat catch. I mean, to be fair, the odds of them just knocking out anything anyway is just high. But I think if I'd rather keep something out of sight for now, it would be the, uh, the Oracorio. Okay, so they're already going to start accelerating their energies on board. They, got, they already attached one for turn, and got a Houndoom, and they're going to keep digging through. And they didn't even play a supporter yet. So right out the gates, they are already... Yeah, so they got another Houndoom. They are setting up exceptionally well. Exceptionally well, I must say. But we're not counting ourselves out of this yet. Definitely not counting ourselves out of it yet. This is probably where they might just get their uh, VMAX. Yep, they're getting their VMAX, so they're going to have that ready to go. So, something's definitely getting knocked out here, I would say. Looks like it's going to be my cram. Thankfully, it did its job to at least get, you know, stuff going for me. Alright. So we're, we're not really doing enough damage. We're not doing enough damage right here, so that's that's kind of low right now. That's kind of low on the damage aspect of things. I mean, the only thing I can hope for is that they don't have a way to retreat. That's all I can hope for right here. So then even next turn, I can do something cheeky like Welder onto my Cram, get energy onto the Reshizard, and just start applying pressure on their Urshifu VMAX over there. That might be my best bet here, I would think. Taking their time deciding what to do here. It's so whether they got the switch or not. And they got they got escape rope. Okay, so yeah, they're just gonna take out my Jirachi here and keep their energy on the board. So that's a bit unfortunate. And then get another Urshifu on the bench. So they have gotten such an amazing setup, just like that. Just like that. Ooh, that's that's harsh. They bumped away our stadium. We needed that. We absolutely needed that right there. And another Houndoom. I gotta say, they are setting up quite well. Interesting they didn't use the other one's ability yet. Interesting they did not do that. I don't know if it's in their prizes or what, but... I feel like it would have been a good idea to use that ability to get the other one powered up just in case. That's just my opinion. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with not using it anyway. Then again, like I said, I don't know their situation. World of two. This might be like the best thing I can do here is... Uh... One doesn't seem very good, but I want to get the energy on right away, though. That's my problem. Uh, even Victini could have been a good option. I mean, yeah, I think I kind of made a mistake there. I should have actually put that energy on the Victini in that situation. A bit of an oversight. Actually, that, that wouldn't have been possible. They probably would have discarded the energy anyway. Let me just see something real quick. Um, 60. They might have already had a knockout anyway. I'm still gonna go for the active. So, so that attack would be like doing 210? 210. 210. Actually, no, that was actually probably a mistake too. Bit of an overstep, in my opinion. And it's just crazy. They got they got set up a lot faster than we did. That's one of the things you gotta consider with this deck too. Is that sometimes uh, yes, with the deck with so much stuff that helps you dig for stuff. 
you can actually hit these hands where you just draw into like all this other stuff that you don't need right away. Like you can get a handful of like scoop of nets, switches, stuff like that. And it's definitely not a good flex, that's for sure. So yeah, they can definitely use their fear uh, the scroll right there. But oh, they're actually gonna they've got something else in mind. They have something else in mind. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Part of me thought they were just going to go for a different play there, but... I guess not. Alright, let me see. Okay, well, I know we're definitely going to get ourselves a Eldegoss here to get the uh, Welder back. Do that. Get the Welder. And then... There's a part of me that wishes that this was already on the bench and we didn't draw into it, but... Life goes on. Just trying to think if there's another way they can actually take us out here. If we get that, that'd be good. So it might actually just be smart just to try to go for the Blacephalon here. That might have to be the play instead. Let me just check my stadium count. So I think here we're actually going to pitch the net, actually. Get that out of the deck. And then... Uh, I think we'd go for the Bless try to go for the Blacephalon play here. It's not a guarantee that we're going to hit it. But I think we'll be in a safer spot, in my opinion. I think we'll be in a safer spot. And, okay, we, we did hit it. We actually did hit it. And then some. We did hit what we needed. So that was actually really lucky. That was really lucky right there. So our play on the Cramorant was actually a smart one. And it turns out um, the Victini play was also a nice flex as well. Because, in a way, I guess we kind of spooked them into using the attack to get rid of all the energy on there. Sorry if you heard that. We have not seen a single Urn of Vitality from them, so that's still in play. With very few cards in the deck, and that big of a hand, I gotta think they gotta at least have one, right? And there it is right there. There it is. Getting ready to break our doors down. So we're banking on not getting a VMAX available. We've only seen one. they got to have another one at least. But, okay, they're going to start pairing that one up as well. Maybe they don't have it. They do have a Marnie. Ugh, that, that hurts. That hurts. We had a really good hand right there. We had a really good hand to help us keep accelerating. <sighs> now our hand's not strong at all. Now we don't even have a strong hand. We do still have an Oracorio to fall back on, though. Right? We do still have Oracorio to fall back on. So I guess they're going to go for an impact blow. Okay. So, I mean, at least here we do have... Well, I mean, we don't right now, but... 50... Not that with that, but then they knock us out with that. So yeah, we have to go Reshizard here. Victini's not an option right now. So I think here what we're going to do is we're going to Hearth. Or two. Goes out of the deck. And then from here, hopefully we will hit... Hoping for a Welder. Not only that, but... I was looking for a switch card as well. That didn't do it for us, unfortunately. Let's 
Unfortunately, I didn't do it. So, this might just turn into a play of... Just swinging. And then, hopefully the next turn, maybe draw a welder? That's so much to hope for, though, unfortunately. That is a lot to hope for. When you have to literally rely on what's on top of your deck, that's usually not a good thing at all. There's a boss, so they that might just do it right there anyway. That does do it, actually. They got the energy. Yep, that's going to be GG's right there. They... <laughs> They set up really well early on, and we, uh, we we couldn't deal with that. For a deck that's supposed to like outrace a lot of stuff, we're the one that got outsped. It does happen, though. It does happen. Like I said, you know, when when you get hands like what we had, it's uh, it's definitely a thing for sure. But uh, we'll uh, we'll try one more, see what happens. Okay, this is gonna be the final game that we try out with it. But, you know, regardless of, like, you know, fast games and then these slower games and these brickier games, you kind of get the concept of uh, how the deck is supposed to work and what it's about. And, you know, in the end, you know, that's one of these things that these videos are supposed to teach anyway. It's just, you know, how stuff works and everything in between. All right. Got a Zashian. Got a Zashian. Could be ADP. Okay. Um. I want to. There's a party that wants to hold this, but we're gonna play it down anyway. And I think here we'll pitch the fire and grab Crobat. I think we'll grab Crobat here. Three cards isn't the best, but with the hand I have now, I don't want it to Dene. Because I do want to save that Exile just in case we are dealing with ADP. And, you know, like I said earlier, ADP... Not ADP. Uh, Exile is probably a card we can end up cutting eventually anyway. Alright, we'll just pass here. And then we'll find out. What are we actually playing against? Ooh, this is Look Metal. Ooh. Okay, that's a bit rough right there. So now we really just need to top deck. Not that. We're not doing any damage there at all. So there's no point of even... There's no point in even doing anything right now. Except just trying to thin out even more. We do have... Oh, we only have two Welder in the deck. Ooh, not good. Ooh. So, I mean, maybe the Dedene would have been a good play. Like, I was just more paranoid about what we were actually playing against, but we could have actually done a Dedene instead of a Crobat. I think we might have been in a better spot, depending on what the other three cards would have been. Oh? Not look metal? Or if it is look metal, they're playing Dedenne in their deck, which, if you're a look metal player, you, you don't need that. You, you definitely don't need that. Let's just take a look. Oh, maybe this is, uh, Cheryl. This could be Corviknight, actually. This could be... or nothing at all. Alright, that wasn't a very good game. I'm gonna... I'm gonna try a different game. That, that game is not good. Take a look at what they were playing. I can't even see. Okay. Try it again. Okay, this is probably gonna be the last game that we try with this deck, but... You know, despite, like, the quick ones we had, and then that one where we didn't really draw well... I mean, essentially you understand, you know, how the deck is supposed to work. You know, win or lose, like, you, you pretty much get the concept of it. People do lose. That is a thing. Alright. Let's see what they got. Alright, Azashian. Are you ADP? Are you look metal? What are you? 
It's kind of funny. We've been playing a bunch of the stuff we've had like type advantage against. That's kind of weird. Alright, this is going to be ADP. The deck that has, uh, you know, scorned many of players for a hot minute now. Yeah, bench my Blacephalon. Go for it. Go for it. To be honest, I probably would have benched it anyway. Okay. You don't have a very big hand, but that's not always, like, telling of what could come. Alright. A hearth here would be fantastic. Quick Ball's not bad either. Quick Ball's not bad either. But... Based on what we have in hand, I think we're actually just going to go Great Ball. I think we'll go Great Ball here instead. Because I don't want to discard any of this. Alright. I still want to dig for it, so we're just going to do this, do that, and do the other thing. Wish again. And we did get the Hearth. We did get the Hearth. We can actually get an attack off this turn. Which I don't think we're in a rush to like really attack per se, but at least get energy accelerated is more or less what I think we're, I'm trying to go for for the time being. And I don't mind pitching the Dedenne here because that can turn into a liability if they get their altered creation off. Okay. So I think with this hand, I think we just hold. We're gonna play it. We're gonna play it sort of chill right now. We're gonna play it chill. Because if anything, if they bring up the ADP, then we're gonna try to go for the double blaze with the added effect. If they don't, we're gonna go for a flare strike on their active Zashian. But so far, it looks like they're putting the pieces together. Knocking out the ADP is gonna be huge right here because that's their, one of their key sources of energy acceleration. And I mean, yeah, they do have Metal Saucer. But, you know, uh, Ultimate Ray just takes it to a whole new level. And they're going to have a research here. They will have a research. So they can uh, keep digging. They're going to get a Dene, so they're definitely going to keep digging. They're really trying to find a switch here. And actually, regardless of whether or not we even uh, knock out the ADP, they still have a Zashian already powered up. It's just a true testament of just how powerful this deck has been from start to finish. It stayed strong for just so long. We have until September, until everything... You know, changes over, of course. Okay, but it looks like here... Oh, they run Empoleon. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good. That's not what you want to see. So, now I think here it's like more than more important than ever to... Hopefully do that. But it looks like here they actually made... They actually didn't hit the switch at all. So... That gives us a little bit of an opportunity. Um, I'm going to hearth first here. Get rid of that. Up two. Uh, that doesn't quite do it. That doesn't quite do it. Let me see my cards again. Um, the switch seems fine. The boss also seems fine. Well, actually, the boss... Well, I mean, here we can actually just... Yeah, we'll, actually, I don't know, we'll grab the boss. We'll grab the boss. Grab the boss here. And I think here we're actually just going to be a bit aggressive on their attackers. Just double-check everything... 
The Empoleon's kind of eyeing us up a bit, but I think here we just go for that play. And then assuming we can get a Welder, then we can aggressively go for the ADP. We do gotta keep in mind though, they do have that big charm on, so we're gonna need our Zigzagoon here. We are gonna need the Goon. And again, another reason why, you know, that card just fixes so much math. Alright, they are going to start powering that up, which now leads us into a curious question of their energy switches, which they didn't play a single one. So that in its own is just worrisome. Right? That is worrisome in a way. Because then all they would need to do in one of these coming turns is to head another water energy and then an E-switch after this alter creation, and then they can just knock out the Reshizard. That won't put us in a good spot. So we're kind of in a little bit of a dire situation. Even here, we can just go a bit aggressive anyway. Like, we just, do we still have, like, knockouts on some stuff right here if we want a rope? But I think here, we're gonna... We'll hearth. We'll pitch that. And then I think here we're gonna go for the Eldegoss this turn. I'm trying to think. Based on what we have, I think we get rid of the Blacephalon. And it's prized, actually. Not only is it prized, but... I mean, I do have another play we're going to have to do here. I think I do have another... Oh, wait, we do get the Zigzag Goon either way. We do get the Goon either way. So I think here we're going to Escape Rope first. If we get a boss's orders off of this, then we can even take advantage of that and bring the uh, ADP back up in the active spot. But I think here they might just bring up the Dedena. Yep, I, I kind of figured they would bring that up. Kind of figured... wish wish for a better card Cause that's that's not gonna do it that is not gonna do it um, it's the best we have though so I think just in case you know pending the situation of course they hadn't done much honestly we I mean I think we still just go for it here as far as uh, plans for the future Next turn we can get an Oracorio out of the deck, assuming this gets knocked out. By this point I'm just trying to get us into like the best shape possible. Good news is they can't necessarily knock us out with uh, ADP. But, I mean the bad news is they can still knock us out with that. I mean not only that, if they have like a damage modifier then that could also hurt us in a way. They might have a damage modifier, like a Vitality Ban or a Rusted Sword. That's also possible. Okay, they're going to bring that up. Little saucer, okay. Still haven't seen much else. They could be just playing around for a Crobat. And, oh yeah, yeah, this could probably uh, help them out here. This could get them like an E-Switch or something. Let's see what it gets. Could even be a quick ball for a Crobat if they're looking to draw cards. If they need like more than one thing, that is. But we'll uh, we'll see. We'll definitely see. Yep. There's the energy switch. There is the energy switch. Okay, they're gonna. Just scoop, okay. So they didn't have anything after all. And yeah, like I said, another reason, like I said, Zigzagoon comes in clutch in these situations. They had that 310, we bumped him down to 300, which is within attack range of, you know, what we need to sort of deal with these kind of situations. But I mean, regardless of how, like, any of that went, you, like I said, you basically understand, like, how the deck works and all that stuff. 
Now, as far as changes go, based on my own observations right here, basically the theory of the Giovanni's Exile didn't exactly like pan out the way I wanted it to. That can get cut for a reset stamp, in my opinion. That can get cut for a reset stamp. You could even argue that if you have the space, maybe you could add in another Crobat, try to get more card draw. Because it seems like we didn't get enough card draw. So maybe adding another bat would also be a good idea. And uh, yeah, if you're not sure what to cut, you know, aside from the Exile, of course, you could even say that, hey, we've got 14 Fire Energy. Maybe we can cut down to 13, possibly 12. Because we were drawing a lot of energies for sure. Just a few examples of ways you can sort of play around the list, but uh, that's basically all I have for today's deck video. Um, thank you all for watching. It's greatly appreciated, of course. Um, if you like what you saw, make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel. I try to put out videos every so often whenever I can. But if you're looking for um, regular um, Pokemon TCG content, I stream every day on Twitch except for Wednesdays from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's every day but Wednesday, from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, under the name The Real Sunny Games. I'll leave my link down in the description, along with the deck list for you to, you know, try it yourself, play around with, make changes as you please. However you feel, you know, this deck could work to your playstyle. I do think it's a really strong deck. You know, even though some games didn't exactly show it, you know, as I said before, you know, you'll get those weird hands. Even the best deck's dead draw, believe me. But yeah, that's all I got for you today. Uh, I thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll find you on Twitch or wherever else I may find you in. And uh, have a good day.